I'm Judge Julie, and this is a court of public opinion. We have no legal authority. What we do here is represent what people, especially older adults in the community, think and feel about issues. While we are not a legal court, we are not afraid to speak up and say what we think is right or wrong. Today, we are looking at the issue of abuse of older persons, or what is commonly known and referred to as elder abuse. Just to clarify so that we're all on the same page with this, I'm going to read just one definition. Abuse of an older person is any action or inaction by self, family, or others that harms the person or violates their rights. So the abuse of older persons may and can include a number of things, from a lack of respect to even a lack of choice for older adults. And unfortunately, there are older adults in our community who are being abused. There are a number of types of abuse, such as financial, physical, or emotional. Just to name a few examples, let's look at our first situation in the Court of Public Opinion. Hello, Judge Julie. My name is Molly, and I'm here with a bit of a problem. My, my niece, Susan. Susan's been my caregiver for about two years, and after she was laid off from her job, we agreed on a fee that I've been paying her ever since. A little over a year ago, I was having difficulty getting around. Susan thought it would be easier if we had a joint bank account so she could pay the bills and my, do some of my grocery shopping, and uh, it seemed like an easier way of doing things. But I checked my bank account for the first time in a couple of months, and it was almost empty. I'm in shock. More than half of my retirement savings have gone. I'm missing over $25,000, and I'm so, I'm so upset. I'm devastated and so very confused. Well, Susan, what do you have to say? Well, yes. Maybe my aunt is confused. She's getting old, and she seems to forget almost everything. What can I say? Things cost more these days. She forgets that prices go up. What can I say? First off, things cost more these days. She forgets that prices go up. These grocery bills are high. More than enough for two households. Okay. I may have picked up a few extra things for myself now and then, but that's to save time while I'm doing work for her. What about the lottery ticket, Susan? Oh, well, we certainly were going to share any winnings. It's for her benefit, too. Did you have any winnings from the lottery? Nothing big. Twenty dollars here or there. Oh, and two hundred once. Did you see any of that two hundred dollars, Molly? Oh, it wasn't that big, so I never mentioned it to her. Did you know she was spending your money on lotto ticket? I had my suspicions, and I know she likes to go to the casino. Oh, I've only been there a couple of times, and I certainly would have shared my winnings with you. Well, it was her money you were gambling with, and that was money from her retirement fund, not your gambling fund. So where did the rest of the money go? Oh, probably bills. I have no idea. I can't really remember. It's interesting what you can and cannot remember. We will take a break, and I'll be back with my opinion. When it comes to the abuse of older people, financial abuse is the most common type. And this situation certainly looks like financial abuse to me. Setting up a joint bank account isn't always the best alternative. You might be putting yourself and your money at risk. What started out to be an easier way of paying for groceries and bills has cost this woman a lot of money. This reminds me of an old saying, Compassion is not always what it appears to be. And I can tell you from experience that when you have friends or family with problems, and here I'm talking about things like gambling, unemployment, substance abuse, whatever, you might be putting your money at risk. This may be a situation of fraud, which is wrong, and a criminal offense. Now, I understand that Molly needs a caregiver. However, Susan may not be the best person to be in this role. 
Yet in my opinion, the community would still need and want to help Susan and other caregivers with support and help for a gambling problem if that is the case in this situation. The bottom line here is that the money belongs to Molly and Molly should not have to put up with this kind of financial abuse. It is wrong. Molly may benefit from learning how to set clear boundaries in order to reduce the risk of something like this happening again. One thing I like to tell older adults is, I don't care if it's family or friends, it's safer to put any financial arrangements in writing. The joint account in this situation might have been too tempting. Perhaps these two people should have set up a housekeeping account so less money would have been at risk. This situation is a reminder for all of us to be careful with our money. Okay, let's look at our next example. Hello, Judge Julie. I'm Mildred, and this is my daughter-in-law, Brenda. Brenda's been taking care of me on and off for the past six years. We don't always get along, but lately it's been getting a lot worse, and I just don't know what to do. Mildred, give me an idea of exactly what's happening. She's crazy. Please, I'd like to hear from Mildred first. Well, I can tell you that I don't like it when she calls me names like that. I may not be the easiest person to get along with. I try and try to go along with her. I'm really confused and afraid because she said that I may not be able to see my grandchildren. And that really hurts me, and she knows it. Brenda, what do you have to say? Well, one thing you should know, I'm not going to be looking after you much longer if you act like that. How dare you make me look bad? You know what? This woman is unbelievable. If it wasn't for me, she wouldn't survive. Here I am busy trying to raise my own family, and she wants me at her beck and call. And what do I get? Nothing. She's messy. Do you want me to talk about that? She's useless. She wouldn't survive without me. She's lazy, hardly does anything. She's getting forgetful. I'm telling you, you're headed for the old folks' home. I'm here to tell you, Brenda, that this is no way to treat any person, especially an older adult. So I'm going to cut this short and be back with my opinion. Okay now, abuse of older adults can start off as being disrespectful and soon turn into emotional and verbal abuse, as is the case here as I see it. This appears to be more than two people bickering. The kind of verbal insults and threats we've heard, threats to cut off contact with grandchildren, threats of nursing homes, there may be other kinds of abuse going on and any abuse is certainly wrong. These people need help, or this situation can easily escalate. Mildred is in a very vulnerable position, and she should not have to put up with it. One thing I can tell everyone is that when you accept any kind of abuse, by doing so, you are indicating that it's okay. If you ever find yourself in a situation like this, you should reach out and talk to somebody. Friends, social workers, healthcare workers, faith leaders, even your bank manager. There is help available in the community. Emotional abuse is wrong. Remember, abuse is not your fault. All right, let's move on to our last situation. Hello, Judge Julie. My name is Violet, and I'm here with my husband, Pete. And I'm sorry to say that after hearing the last situation, it's so much like our life. The insults, the name calling. He treats me like that all the time. He's the one who lays down the law. He can be very mean sometimes. And it's not just the yelling. Wait, wait a minute here. Our life is a completely different thing. We're a married couple. And all couples argue, right? We both have different roles. I'm the man, she's the wife. Uh, so it's a completely different deal, period. I'd like to hear more from Violet. 
Please, Violet, tell me what is happening in your marriage. That's how it's always been. When we were young, he was an angry young man. Now he's an angry, hostile young man who grew old. And he's getting worse. He's always calling me names. He's putting me down. It's always his way or the highway. Now, now, hold on here, you know. Uh, I'm the one who puts the money on the table. It's my home, and I'm going to be the king of my own castle. That's just the way it is. By the way, I'm the one who brings in the larger pension in this household. Yeah, by only $48 a month. Oh. I'm sorry, Pete, but I can never get to say anything. He just controls everything. He looks after the banking, the money. I have no idea how much we have. Uh, you'd never be able to figure it out. If you were running the money, we'd be broke. He's always been a boss. It's his way or the highway. He was always driving the car, and when he had to give up his license, he seemed to blame me. Well, you don't even know what you're talking about. Stupid. Judge Julie, I don't know if it's because we've had health problems lately, but he's getting worse. And every problem we have is my fault. I try to settle him down, but as soon as there's a problem, he can't handle it. One little problem, and he's either yelling or stamping around, smashing things, and trying to scare me. So, Pete, what do you have to say about all of this? Well, not much, you know. Okay, so we fight sometimes. So what? Takes two to tango, right? I bet you that all couples fight, and I'm not that bad. She just knows how to really get me going. So she's the one who usually starts things. I'm just reacting. Pete, have your arguments ever gone to the point where there was any physical contact? I don't have to answer that. Well, actually you do. That's the risk you take when you talk to Judge Julie in the court of public opinion. Okay, I, I hit her a couple of times, not hard. And that was weeks ago, but she just got me really mad. And I felt really bad about it, and then I apologized. You know I said I was sorry. You also know that I don't want to talk about that. I know this is difficult. I just had to make sure I understood the situation. I appreciate your honesty. It may help others. We'll be back with my thoughts on this situation. One thing that this situation demonstrates is that spousal abuse does not stop at age 65, just like it doesn't usually begin then. And this also shows us that abuse can and often does escalate. And once again, when you accept abuse, you're indicating it's okay to do that. We would hope before things got worse that people would reach out for help, and help is available. I hope that the situations we've seen today will get people talking. There is no one-size-fits-all solution for these situations. No one deserves to be abused. The best way to protect yourself is to know what abuse is, know that all abuse is wrong, and find out what help is available in the community. I hope people will reach out for the help that is there. Keep safe. Thank you.